Okay. Hello, hello. Already a good few people here. Okay. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. I hope my audio is dialed in. And you can hear me well. Yeah, it's all good. And you should be able to see the class presentation in Discord as well. Yep. And I also have the stream up. Should work as well. Okay, welcome to the intro to exploration class. I haven't been playing for quite a while and this is my first class in like two years, I think. But I have some uh, decent experience in exploration, so I hope I can satisfy all your questions as well, or yeah, at least try to. But first we'll get started. We have a few standard class rules. Of course, please set your microphone to push the talk. And you can ask questions uh, in game. Um, if you're in game, you don't need to be in game, obviously. But if you're in game and you actually want to focus on the class, obviously, I recommend that you're actually like, docked up or in a safe space. But obviously, if you want to mine or be in a fleet on the site, if you're able to do that, then <laughs> do whatever you will. Um, yeah, you can ask questions in the in-game channel uh, class if you need, and yeah, you can also ask questions here on Mumble or in the Discord. Uh, just have to bring that up. Yeah. So we're going to talk about what is exploration what you can do, what uh, different types of exploration there are, type of explorers, what do you need as a, as a base thing to start, um, ships and modules, skills, player skills, and then a few yeah, upgrade paths, so to speak. And we go over the basis of scanning down a side and the hacking mini game, the really important rule of six, and talk about some exploration tips and tricks and at the end I'll can also show a bit of yeah live in-game presentation uh, and you can ask questions obviously okay in exploration we uh, want to explore space obviously uh, we want to see the world, the universe, and uh, we want to find riches. And there are a few different uh, things we can find when we are in a system. Um, if we have the probe scanner window open, we will see cosmic anomalies and we will see cosmic signatures. Uh, so cosmic anomalies are with a green marker. Uh, yeah, they can be of different types and you can just warp to so you don't actually need any equipment to get to those anomalies but the cosmic signatures that are red um, that need to be scanned down before you can actually warp to so we have a few different types of cosmic anomalies um, we have comet sites we have all anomalies, so that's more for PvE or mining. And then we have faction warfare complexes. And obviously you might have noticed different other um, complexes now, for instance, with the new expansion. You now there are some different pirate sites as well. And they are always like with events and other stuff. You can always find different kinds of anomalies that are for PvE or for PvP. 
And then we have a whole bunch of different cosmic signatures you can find, uh, like wormholes, gas sites, uh, comet sites as well, also special ghost sites and other very specific exploration sites with specific rule sets um, that are yeah, mostly like more difficult to scan down and can be a bit more dangerous as well. Um, Wormals are really great because you can actually um, explore a different type of space, which is very interesting and where you can actually find like really good loot as well and learn a lot about uh, the universe and uh, the different mechanics and get blown up by people that you don't know where they're coming from. <laughs> and the main part, what's really important for especially a beginner explorer are the relic sites and the data sites. Yeah, uh, we have different types of explorers. So you can choose, obviously, if you want to go to go uh, cosmic anomalies. Uh, so just pick a like cruiser or something, and then just do comet sites. Um, you can scan them down, or just use the uh, ready to warp to green sites. But what we are talking about today mainly is the hacking explorer that is mostly looking for data and relic sites. So as a basis, you can just use the T1 frigates that are specific for um, exploration. Uh, the Magnate on the Mars side, Imicus on the Galante side, and Heron on the Kadari side. And obviously my personal favorite, the Probe, the Minmata Rusty ship. They all have the same bonuses, bonuses to scanning and hacking. Um, yeah, and you should probably at least just get your basic frigate skill for whatever race you want to fly up to four to really get a decent bonus because you get 7.5 bonus to uh, probe strength and yeah, also salvage duration. Not important for the explorer really, but yeah and the uh, row bonus, so the basis bonus of the of all of these hulls is that your analyzers are more potent. And yeah, if you want to go further uh, into exploration and maybe if you're not low, you actually have an Omega now and are not lo no longer Alpha, so that's the really nice thing about the basic exploration, you can just hop in a basic T1 frigate and do that as an alpha character as well and make just as much basically as a, as a more experienced and Omega character as well. But yeah, if you want to go further down the route and like try out different ships, um, you can go for the T2 versions of the uh, Exploration frigates, the Anathema on the Mars side, Helios, the Galente, Buzzard, the Kaldari ship, and the Cheetah, the Minmata ship, um, which I will show you later. And some, uh, yeah, uh, theoretically you can also use the, the cruiser version as well of this, but really effective uh, for basic exploration is the Astero as well, also very accessible skill-wise, way more accessible than the T2 um, frigates, uh, but yeah, it's not, not as specialized, but it also has some combat uh, abilities, so that can also be nice if you want to do exploration and maybe a bit of PvP as well, or at least be able to do um, some kind of PPVP. Uh, what I can't really talk about much are the Empire and Navy Fleet issue frigates because I haven't really seen those in action. Uh, but yeah, they have some combat uh, bonuses as well. Um, and yeah, obviously they are more costly. 
but they don't have the high skill requirements um, like the T2 cohort op ships. So you must have modules are a core probe launcher. Mm. Obviously you can later on get some specialized uh, probe launchers, but the T1 is just fine. And then core scanner probes one and data analyzer and relic analyzer. Obviously you can also choose to just do one type of site and just take that analyzer if you want. But yeah, I would recommend as a beginner that you always have like both analyzers and just try out both sites as well. And then there are other things you can fit on your ship, obviously. Uh, MWD, 5MN micro warp drive is really recommended to be fast between uh, the different cans on the site so that you can actually complete the site faster. And then a fiber internal structure as well, just for uh, being faster, uh, as well as being more agile. And the inertial stabilizers are really mostly so that you're a bit safer, that you can warp off uh, faster and maybe have a chance to actually escape. Uh, scan range finding arrays can really help you, especially once you, um, if you still have like lower skills, um, because they boast, boost your ability to actually scan down um, signatures a bit. And you can also use a cargo scanner. So some people just go into the site, scan all the available cans, um, and then decide on which they are actually hacking. Um, because there can be cans that don't really have any or any worth for a loot in them. And here are some example fits you can just um, have a look at. Yeah, as you see, when you really see the estimated price, you can basically hop in with under a million or about 500 to a million, even with a fully fitted um, exploration ship so they are really really cheap and you have enormous potential for earnings and then we have uh, some in-game skills uh, that you should actually train most important is the astromatic skill that actually helps with all three important levels for your probe, uh, for your scanning. So you have scan strength, you have scan deviation, and you have scan time. Scan time is arguably the least important. Um, no, that's right. Um, scan strength is the most important, I would say. Um, so after you have astromatics, really high, you should get astromatic rage fighting uh, prior as I said, and then you have scan deviation, which also helps um, actually like finding um, signatures. Basically when you scan down uh, and it shows you the signature at a specific place, the higher that level is, the more accurate that reading in the, in the UI actually becomes. And then you have scan time. So that just means how long it takes for the probes to scan. Obviously that's more convenient. You can scan faster, but it doesn't help you really just scanning down the signature in and of itself. And then you have both the archeology span and hacking skill. Those are really important to actually be able to do the mini game um, and have a good chance at actually doing it. Uh, it gives you plus 10% virus coherence. You can see at the bottom all the alpha limits. So with the alpha, obviously, we will always be a bit limited, but you can still do most of the basic sites. You might find some that are very hard or too hard for you to scan down, but you can still do quite a bit 
as an alpha in exploration. Uh, really important are your own skills at the game because you actually need to be able to obviously navigate your ship on basic thing system to system and in system but you really really need good understanding and you will also learn about about a lot about these things doing exploration of using bookmarks using the directional scanner using the overview um, because that is really if you're in hostile space, really, really crucial to actually be able to survive as an explorer. And obviously then just the basics of how you scan down the site and the hacking minigame, which we'll go over. We also have uh, classes on navigation, on bookmarking, on directional scanning and so forth. So you can also check out those classes as well if you need some more in-depth knowledge there. So here's a basic overview of um, the scan UI and how it looks in game. And later on, I will show the, how it actually looks live. So you can see the uh, scan window, uh, the probe window, where you actually see the signatures. You see some green, some red some comet sites and two cosmic signatures that actually need to be um, scanned down. You have different probe formations at the bottom left. Usually the default pr um, probe formation is totally fine. You have the probe size diameter, which just, um, yeah, the, basically the amount of space uh, the scanners the scanning probes actually cover and you can dial that in and obviously the less space they have to cover the more accurate they become and then you have the recover probes button uh, there was a time when this button actually was really important because otherwise your probes would be lost in space uh, if you change system now they are actually auto recovered if you take a gate or a wormhole or dock but yeah, you can still recover them as well whenever you want to. And obviously at the bottom right, the analyze button to actually start the scan. And on the right, you see uh, how it looks inside the uh, solar system view. Um, basically the red bubble is the signature. In the middle you see um, the UI element that allows you to move the probes around and then the other lighter colored bubbles are all the um, scanning radiuses from uh, the different probes. And then we have the hacking minigame. This is how it looks with all the different things you can find here. Um, so you start, basically you activate your hacking module, either the analyzer, the uh, radic analyzer or the data analyzer on a, um, yeah, on a site uh, where you have like cans around, you just target those and then use one of the appropriate analyzers. And then this hacking window opens and you will start at a random point and you can just go from there basically clicking through each of the nodes methodically you don't have like a time limit it's basically a kind of round based mini game so each click is around each node you explore is also round uh, basically and um, you have explorable nodes so the light colored and then the red nodes or reddish nodes are already uh, explored and then you can find items, uh, utility subsystems that are that you can basically loot. And uh, down at the bottom, you have your inventory for the mini game, so you can find repair stuff and damage stuff and shields and whatnot to actually help you get through the mini game. 
Uh, you have data caches. Those are basically mystery chests, <laughs> maybe you could call them. So you can find a utility subsystem in there, a random one, but more often than not, it actually spawns one of the defensive subsystems. Um, your goal is to get to the system core. In this case, it's green, but it can also be yellow or red, depending on the difficulty of the can. And then you have different um, uh, defensive subsystems, uh, the restoration node, uh, the firewall, the antivirus, the virus suppressor. Uh, you would not find all of these in a green can, but yeah. And down at the bottom uh, left, you have like the really important bit about your stats, basically, that you have for the minigame. You have career, co co coherence um, on the left, that's the yellow um, bar, and strength on the right, so basically your hit points and your damage that you do. And you can see the same um, on the defensive subsystems. If you look closely, um, you can see on, on the bottom left, you see the Koreans with this star thingy at the top and the strength with the Wi-Fi <laughs> uh, signal thingy. And you can see the same on the defensive subsystem nodes, basically, so that you always know, OK, this is the health of the subsystem and this is the damage the subsystem can do. Yeah, here it's more in depth, so you can see it better. Hit points on the left, damage on the right, uh, and then all the different different subsystems, the restoration nodes basically heal other nodes. Then you have different um, basic damage nodes, so uh, the to check. Uh, yeah, so the the left one of the, is the antivirus, and the other ones are the firewalls. Um, the antivirus just has more damage, less health, and the firewall um, has yeah more health and less damage. And the virus suppressor actually lowers your damage. So those should always be targeted first. If they, if you get them, then basically the restoration nodes need to be killed because otherwise you cannot kill the other defensive subsystems because each round, so each click you do in the mini game is a round. And every time the restoration nodes picks a random uh, defensive subsystem you already found and uh, gives it more health points. So healing, just like your, uh, your utility uh, subsystem you can find, um, isn't like a real, so you don't have an upper limit in that sense. You start with a specific amount of health and all of the subsystems also start with a specific amount of health. But if they are healed, they actually just get bonus XP. So if uh, bonus XP bonus health points. Um, so if they haven't taken any damage, they just get more and more health points. Um, yeah, then you have your different utility subsystem, kernel rod that halves the HP of the defensive subsystem you use it on. Secondary vector is basically a dot damage over time effect. So three R rounds, it does 60 damage um, altogether 20 damage each round so really good to kill the virus suppressor then you have the shield which just takes two hits uh, for you basically and then you have the self-repair the health boost yeah and i already talked about the data cache basically mystery chest and you have the system core which you actually need to kill to everything else is just Part of the game but if you find the system core right away and you can't kill it just do that and really crucially the rule of six uh, can really help you uh, find the core and also be more safe in the hacking game although you can because the 
game is completely random you get a completely random um, set of notes every time um, there might be a board basically you are presented with that where you can't actually apply the rule of six usually you have at least a few uh, points where you can try that but yeah sometimes you have a whole board where you can really run through and just using the rule of six being very safe but yeah that's completely random um, that's really what exploration comes down to the randomness that's also with your earning potential the overall earning potential is really good but obviously you can have a run where you don't really find anything and you can have a run where you find a lot so it's not as consistent and that game game is also like that um, so the row six is a node that is surrounded by six other nodes is always safe unless the system core is somewhere around there so if you actually find something in the middle uh, of the of such a grid you know okay one of the six nodes outside is definitely the system core yeah some tips and tricks um for exploration safety is a really good concern but also at least if you just have a t1 ship you don't really have a lot on the line obviously you need to remember to not use your training clone because otherwise you might actually have a lot on the line um, because usually if you're like at least in Narsec or warmer space you're very vulnerable but still obviously safety really important um, you need to be fast in pretty much everything you do uh, move fast through the systems uh, get to a safe point scan if there are people around you or if you're in a warm and you don't know if there are people around you scan as fast as you can get to a site and then do the site as fast as you can because i mean that is really the crucial part because if you're at a site that is your most vulnerable part you're focused on the hacking game so you might not be looking on your overview all the time you should be looking on your overview all the time and you should or especially in your if you're in warm space you should always run your directional scanner constantly uh, while you actually hack but obviously that's harder to do while you're focusing on the hacking mini game um, and you also want to make it fast but you also don't want to lose the hacking mini game because after you lost it the second time the can will just explode and you will get no loot okay so be fast as fast as you can and then rename your ship obviously a lot of people fly around with their basic ship name don't do that please ever but especially if you're exploring doing exploration and you're in a wormhole for instance and people just see your name and then it can just put it in z kill and know everything about you that you are maybe a very new player and they don't have to fear anything about you and they can just drop on you for instance <clears throat> you can to be faster in a system you can also scan why you're obviously in warp or why you're cloaked which also gives you safety um, but you can definitely do exploration without being able to cloak as well so as an alpha as well you just need to find good or make good saves and maybe warp around and always watch local if there's local if you're in warm hole obviously there's no local um, and always watch dscan and if you're in a site also check your overview because you will see if somebody's warping in there um, bookmarks really important as i said before always make safe bookmarks make multiple especially i mean that that really should be done in every system but you can also do like other saves 
um, around stations or gates, gate purchase are mentioned here as well, especially important in NullSec, um, in areas you are frequenting. And NullSec, LowSec, LowSec a bit less than NullSec, but as you are very vulnerable in LowSec, you could be smart bombed. And in NullSec, obviously there are bubbles, so you should really never warp gate to gate. And then you can bookmark sites uh, as well. So you can do that for your own. Just bookmark the sites if you want to do them later, but you can also put them, for instance, if you find sites that you can't do or don't want to do, or you don't have any time anymore, you can also put them uh, in our exploration bookmarking folders if you are in EFUNI. And obviously, as with most things in EVE, always expect to lose your ship. Um, it's very flimsy for the most part. Really easy to kill. Um, yeah, but you shouldn't fret. It's very cheap, at least if you're doing it in a T1 frigate. And even if you're doing it later on, when you've got more experience and more costly ships, you might just already have done a trip and you already made a hundred million and then maybe you lose one ship well you can replace it okay well that was uh, quite fast maybe i was too fast mm, i mean maybe the slides were a bit light so I think you covered basically everything on the slides, right? Well, I think. I got new information on the mini game. I really just thought it was just random tapping, so I learned something new there. Thank you. Yeah, very yeah. good. That's very what good. I was here for. I'm not very good at that one. Yeah. Some might say bad, even. I just kind of mash. Yeah, you can really do methodical things. Oh, actually, one thing I didn't mention about the mini game, I forgot that, and actually, that should be in the slides at some point. Um, oh, somebody has keyed up. Hello. Hello. Who's keying up? Okay. Yeah. Um. So you are you are spawned in the uh, random position in the hacking minigame, um, and the most likely place <laughs> that's a bit tricky sometimes, but the most likely place that the core is is basically at the opposite side, at the furthest furthest away from your spawn point. So you can sometimes you are really down in the left corner, for instance, and then you can basically just go straight through the whole thing in the middle if it works sometimes there is no real good path there but you can try that and basically go directly to the upper right corner and most likely as i said it's all random most likely you will find the core there uh, somewhere around that area uh, but you can also spawn kind of in the middle and then obviously that becomes a bit more unclear where you have to search so yeah sometimes you have to basically clear the whole board before you find anything and sometimes you have a direct path find a direct path and you don't even encounter a defensive subsystem you get to the core and it's all good is there any other tricks like should you open the, the mystery boxes that i always do and it screws me over every time uh well what is your experience what did you find most of the time uh, uh, uh like a restoration though that just kills the yeah thing. <laughs> exactly so yeah hmm? you should probably not open those yeah yeah open. i would i i always uh, leave them be uh, until the end so if at the end i don't have a path forward i for instance have 
too few coherence left or um, there's something I cannot just cannot kill because I need a subsystem to kill it or uh, um, some help to kill it for instance a shield or whatever um, then I go back to those data caches and maybe I'm lucky and find something there that actually helps me so yeah that but I think you already have the experience that you <laughs> can see I, that I basically rage quit so <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll try that. Then. Uh, is there any other trick, like tricks you can think of right now? Uh, I have to think. Maybe I find uh, another site and can show you some as well when I'm doing it. You can, um, just, you can just work on, I guess, improving the slides if you want. Well, they're not my slides. Those are the for sure yeah, unique slides. <laughs> but uh, but <laughs> maybe they need some help. Right? So, <laughs> I think at some point I worked on the slides like two years ago and then some other people did it as well. But yeah, yeah that, there are definitely that, a few points. Yeah, the part about uh, where it is and uh, the part about maybe not opening the box. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are always a lot of uh, a lot of things you can put in the slides that always a bit of balance how, how stuffy they get. Uh, but yeah. Um, there's another question. Any suggestions on overuse settings for use while in a site? Um, I always use the main one. Um, I mean, really important. Obviously, you can just make up your own uh, overview settings, as well. but I would suggest and just it's important to see. Um, the cans and it's important to see if anybody's warping in that's basically it everything else not really um, Eve, uni the overview if you have that they do have a pvx exploring uh overview setting for, for filters so that does help some oh that's a good tip yeah i just started doing this like two days ago so i learned all this the hard way How do I avoid dying once I enter a wormhole? Very good question. Very good. Am I supposed to warp somewhere or create a bookmark if I wind up in warmer space? Yes, create a bookmark. Um, the most important thing once you enter wormhole, don't do anything, don't move your ship. You are still cloaked, so you're still kind of safe, uh, just like when you jump a gate. And in that time, just look around, check your uh, overview, check your system map, check your uh, D-scanner, but most importantly, right-click on the warmer you just jumped in uh, through and create a bookmark so that you can find your exit warmer again. Ideally, you actually have like a naming scheme for things when you do warmer exploration. There are also out-of-game tools that really help you with a wormhole exploration. Um, yeah, maybe we can chat about that a bit more about wormholes later, but it's a bit more out of the scope of the, of the class. But yeah, basically in wormholes, okay, you don't have local, you cannot rely on local, so it's all about descan. Um, once you're inside, still always descan, 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 and check your overview because there might be a Tengu uncloaking right on top of you and you just need to get the f out um yeah and otherwise just create bookmarks use saves um yeah uh which region is the best for exploration um so regions have a bit of Differences. I'm not really dialed into those. I think drones reach uh, drones region is quite good for some exploration. There are a few others that have like um, specific loot that are that can be more valuable, or um, specific regions have, for instance, uh, 
yeah, specific activity, obviously. So you might find regions where there are just more explorers around. And what's really important is just which base you want to explore to. So high sec space, uh, don't, <laughs> just don't. I mean, you can do it obviously to just try out the scanning and the hacking, but it's absolutely never worth it. You get like a couple million at most, basically. Low sec, um, that yeah can net you a bit more. That's kind of fine, and especially if you're alpha or you have generally lower skills, and you still want to find your bearings. Obviously, low, low sec is perfectly fine. It's not as dangerous, especially at wormholes. Um, you can just be a bit more chill about it. But yeah, you have a bit of risk, but the rewards are massively more than in high sec. And then basically null sec and wormhole space are in the same level uh, reward wise, but have obviously different threats as well. Um, yeah. And what's also nice in NALSEC, if you're talking about NALSEC regions, it's really go good to have a look at the, what they call again, the metaliminal storms. There's one specific metaliminal storm. <sighs> you can track those on, on uh, uh, mapping tools as well. Oh, I don't remember the name. Um, they give like a bonus. You can check it on the wiki they give like a bonus um, to uh, scanning and hacking and they also can spawn relic sites so those can be really very valuable but obviously there will also be a lot of traffic there so it's a lot of different considerations if you're talking about different regions or um, different types of space Honestly, my experience personally is that the safest place in Eve that isn't docked up is uh, Solve Null. Um, yeah, can be. But, but you're some of those places just have no one. Yeah. Um, I would say, like, the safest way is really find Wormhole that leads into Nalsec in some back pocket. Where you can just where there's like maybe just a few um, farmers around or nobody and that can be really really nice because you have like a lot of dead systems and there's basically no activity and you can just take the warm out again so that can be really good because if you're going to null sec obviously you can also use filaments but yeah um if you're going to null sec and you don't find a way out that is safe, that's the highest risk that you end up in a gate camp or something and then lose all your loot. Uh, are the safety protocols in JSpace and NALSEC pretty much the same or are there differences in how you should act in those regions? Um, yeah, so NALSEC, obviously a lot more bubble prone, gate camp prone. Um, there might be hunting fleets around. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a bit different in warmer space. Um, yeah, no local. That's the most important thing. Your entire reliance is on D-scan, basically. Yeah, so yeah, the safety protocols are a bit different. But the basis, the basics are the same, basically. Uh, do you have bookmarks, tutorials, etc. you can recommend for Pathfinder and other warmer space mapping tools? I do not. Um, I don't even remember which tool I actually used. I have to look that up again. I don't think I used Pathfinder. Uh, yeah, uh, Lady Vaya really uh, did a good summary 
of all the most important points for moment space. There is the Eve Uni map I yeah. um, Okay, I'm gonna just share my in game thingy. Uh, hello. Hello. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Oh, uh, so, um, whenever I get into a wormhole, um, I find a lot of, uh, like, unsecured data sites and forgotten, uh, relic sites, and on the wormhole, on the wormhole, like, safe explo website that I use to check if it's safe or not safe, it's listed as unsafe, but... I've taken the risk a couple of times just to check the place out and I've done, I've looted some of them and sometimes they just, they just, it's just safe. There's no like NPCs to like attack me or anything. Okay. So like, how do I, is it just like complete RNG? Like sometimes, and I'm just like taking a gamble that like the forgotten and unsecured sites are just, you know, clear of hostiles or is there like some way to tell? I've never heard that they would be clear like um, before. So maybe somebody else did the site in part, but I don't know. That makes no yeah, sense no. if you could still have something to loot. No, there should always be spawns uh, once you are in the site. Um, only the pirate names. Only it's not just like one time. It's like yeah, that's multiple weird. times. Hmm, we okay. have like done like unsecured data sites and it's listed as not safe and i go there and i none of the none of the crates are looted by the way like none of the crates are looted and like none of them have been hacked and i just do them and i'm like okay i guess <laughs> hmm. nice <laughs> yeah nice so it's not supposed to be like safe <laughs> No, oh, like just the, the just the basic pirate. So basically, you can always just look for the pirate names if there's like um, whatever Gurista or whatever all of the pirate factions. Those are um, mostly safe. <laughs> you can you can find Mortis Legion uh, sites in Losec. Those aren't safe, but yeah, other than that, that's uh, always a good indicator. Yeah, I've been using um, this website, which is called Safe Explo, which just just tells me if it's safe or not safe. Mm, okay. But, yeah, on um, the wiki you can question. also find that. So, um, do you know Kismetia? It's like an ISD. It's also okay. an EVE no. online no. Discord, but like he recommended that to do safe exploration when you're starting out is that you just buy a bunch of like no sick filaments and you. And you um just like filament into null sec. The problem I have with that technique is that there's just no wormholes <laughs> in null sec <laughs> from what I've seen. They're basically getting out as the problem, as I said before. But yeah, you can obviously you can use the filaments and you can use um like a really safe way if you just want to use filaments, could be to have a few null sec filaments, have a few uh, trick space filament filaments and for trick space there are specific filaments that actually get you out into high sec as well so you could use or not high sec but near the not necessary high sec but near the um uh the old system well well the trick systems used to be in in normal space yeah i know exactly what you're talking about where you're like in nullsec and then you like filament into petroven area yeah. and then you like filament back into high yeah. sick, right yeah so that yeah. would be the safest way if you just want to use filaments yeah but yeah but i've been i've 
given it like multiple tries, but I feel like it's just incredibly not worth it. Like trying to do wormholes in null sec because it's like there's just no wormholes in null sec. No, I just thing. I would always go the other way, go into low sec or maybe even high sec, but I don't know. I generally scan a low sec for a wormhole entrance, go into wormholes, and then maybe you'll find a wormhole um, entry into null sec as well. But I usually mostly do wormholes and through no sec okay can you filament in wormhole space uh good question i don't remember <laughs> i don't, I don't think, think so, so. no really no I, I don't think so um the sh uh, you can ah, okay. oh really so if you just bring a filament you can't really get stuck well i mean like if you use like the potion then it will work An another one i don't know I had the posture in mind might work, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I nev I've never tried that. I mean, like, filament to posture and then to normal space. I don't know, but the one that I use, you can't... The one that I use, it specifically says that you have to be in known space to go into Petroven, but that, I don't know, there might be a... That should that... be... That should be how it works, right? Um... Yeah, at least that's the filament I use, but there might be a filament that takes you from wormhole space into Petrova, I don't know. That would be so easy, you wouldn't even need to scan to get out. <laughs> That'll be a little bit broken, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so one one tip I have actually to new players who want to do exploring is you can you can set up a buy order in the like in or near the the new player systems i guess and buy like cheaper hulls for explorer ships so you can get them for like three hundred thousand instead of four hundred thousand oh, so okay can add up a lot like you can even get them even lower than that it depends on if there's other people trying to buy them or not you can like get them for a hundred thousand oh okay like, it's it's a uh, very useful you can also buy the data modules but that's not really like you don't get as many of those okay good tip so you can like do you can buy stuff in bulk like that and your overheads will be even, even lower Okay, you should be um, able to see my in-game view now. You got another question? Uh, no, I just wanted to let people know Eve Uni has a fully uh, decked out Heron, or T1 Heron, if you're in in, in the corporation for zero oh, yeah. risk on contract. Yep. So um, yeah. yeah, you can always just find those basic ships as well in Eve Uni. Yeah, so I'm here in a low sec system, pretty new to our uh, main staging point uh, in my trusty cheetah. Uh, just uncloaking and throwing off my probes. And I can recloak again so that nobody can scan me down. For instance, that Tikata maybe has combat probes and uh, would like to scan me down. Um, yeah, we have a few red... Why? So you can see my scanning probes as well on my directional scanner. Really important also if you're in warmer space, um, you see your own set of scanner probes. But if you see a second uh, set, obviously that is a good indicator for you to um, at least be wary. Why are people conroying me here? <laughs> Okay, later. 
Um, yeah, and you can see uh, at the top of my window, you see all the different signatures that are available. So we have one war signature where you could just warp directly with your mining ship there. And you can see the probes here. I can move them around. Um, when I hold down Alt and just uh, scroll my um, mouse wheel, I can just change the scanning range. And obviously you can use the slide as well. Here are the formations. You can set this window up as much as you like. You can pop out the probe scanning window or you have it like me or you have it on the other side or whatever. Um, and obviously you can resize this however you like, but I always like to have it up top here. Um, and you can see all the different red bubbles here where the uh, cosmic signatures are and I usually just put them somewhere in the middle of it, do like a 16 AU scan. And then we'll see what we get. And we can see on the bars here, okay, and the percentages, we have one signature that is decently uh, scanned down. And um, what's really good to do if you want to just scan faster, you can just double click here and you see the view changing. These are basically, and you can also use these buttons, but you can just double click. Uh, and so just take this, double click, take this, and you basically have it on there. And then you just, um, usually I would say like, do one increment if you're just um, starting out. So from 6 in AU to 8 AU, but I always do like 2. And we're lucky and it's actually a data site. Oh, so I can actually so show you hacking as well, maybe. And there you go, region is Serpentis. Serpentis is one of the uh, one of the pirate factions, so we know it's safe. Uh, great, there's a checked around. Oh, we'll see. Maybe you will see me blow get blown up here. That's also fun. Um, ah. um, yeah, what I just did is show all bracket visibility up on the top here. Should be able to see everything here. So I can see the layout here and basically plot my path as well. Just checking scan periodically, uncloaking, putting on my MWD. And then I always orbit um, close-ish so that you can warp off easily, but you're also not a sitting duck. And I use the data analyzer here. Yeah, I'm at the top right, so most likely the core is somewhere here. But it could also be here, it could also be here. <laughs> but we're gonna try and um, take a direct path here. Um, here, rule of six, perfectly safe. You can also see these numbers popping up here. Um, those can show you um, that there is something um, 
uh, close how close something is to to the thing you just clicked. So we use a data cache. I'm just gonna ignore that for now. Another data cache, and the core is not here. <laughs> so we're gonna try a restoration node. Kill that. Great. Well, this is a really good example. Another restoration node, fantastic. Oh, great. And there's a shield. There's a restoration node, why not? There's the core. I'm gonna use the shield, kill it, and then I can loot it. And there's nothing in there. Great. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that what can happen, obviously. No, I'm not gonna do the site fully now. Um, maybe another point. Um, if you don't have like really good skills um, but you've got a bit more money now and you want to do exploration more i would suggest the first thing is to invest in a, a set of sister score scanner probes and uh, later on in a sister core probe launcher you shouldn't really be using those though when you're just flying a t1 ship because they cost well they did cost like 30 million i don't know what they actually cost right now Okay, another question. Could you describe what you like about the probe and cheetah for Explore? I'm just a Minmatar through and through. <laughs> I mostly fly Minmatar ships and yeah, I really enjoy them. I just like the design. Um, so the most optimal starting exploration ship is the Heron. It's just It just has the best slot layout. You can get the most um bonus um what they are caught here there yeah let me check uh the most scan range finding arrays or other um yeah bonus arrays there to raise your scanning um skills basically Probe, you can name it Core Scanner Probe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think um, we are basically done. Um, if there are any more specific, one more question, if somebody want to chat about that or whatever, obviously we can also just chat some more about this class is basically done. And yeah, if there aren't any more questions, I will close the streams up and yeah maybe be here for another five minutes if you don't all leave right away and you have some further questions thank you all for attending a lot of people i did not expect that but yeah Mm-hmm.